So um, in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do is we want to evaluate tangent. Now, so we have tangent 165. We rewrote that as the difference of tangent of 210 minus 45 degrees. And then I provided you with the formula, tangent of u minus v, where u and v are your two angles, is tangent of u minus tangent of v divided by 1 plus tangent of u times tangent of v. Now, again, when you guys are getting started with this, it's very important that you plug in your angles. Once you guys get a little bit more familiar with this, you can kind of bypass the step. But I think when you guys are starting out, it will be very helpful to say tangent of 210 degrees minus 45 degrees, where that's my u and that's my v, is equal to the tangent of u, which is 210 degrees, time, or minus the tangent of 45 degrees. Remember, it's positive v, right? You're subtracting a positive v divided by 1 plus tangent of u, which is 210, times tangent of v, which is 45. Does everybody get me at that point? We good? OK. Now we need to evaluate for tangent 210. Now for sine and cosine um, formulas, we know that sine represents the y coordinate, cosine represents the x coordinate. But tangent becomes a little more difficult because you're like, crap, now I have to do the y coordinate over the x coordinate. And it's just a little bit of extra work for us. So let's go and do that over here real quick. So if I had 210 degrees, the y coordinate is negative 1 half divided by the x coordinate, which is negative 3 over 2. Now I've always tried to program you guys to multiply by the reciprocals. but one thing here is these twos are going to divide out when we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're left with, we're left with a positive 1 over the square root of 3 because the negatives um, divide into a positive. Then we have to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom, and we get the square root of 3 over 3. Right. So now we know the square root of 3 over 3. I'm not going to do the same thing for tangent because you notice if I take y over x, that's this, these are the same numbers, right? They're crazy. They're fractions. They have a radical, but they're the same. So any time you take the same number divided by the same number, you're going to have 1. So the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So now I'm going to plug them into this equation. So tangent 210 degrees. Square root of 3 over 3 minus 1. All over 1 plus the square root of 3 over 3 times 1. Okay. Anybody have any questions on how I got to this point? Because right now, this is very fundamental. You have to make sure you can evaluate. You have to know you have to plug them in into the formula and um, know what the tangent is for both of those angles. Now that we're at this point, now we've got to simplify this. All right. Now, you can't have your radical in your denominator for our exact answer. So a lot of you might want to rationalize the denominator, right? multiplying by the conjugate. But Miranda, what I would probably say is that's probably not your preferred method right here because you have these fractions, right? And a lot of you don't really like dealing with fractions, right? Including myself. So we go back to this important point. If I have 2 fourths, right? If I have the fraction 2 fourths and I multiply by that by 3 over 3, I now obtain 6 over 12. Is 6 over 12 an equivalent fraction to 2 fourths? Are they really the same measurement? Yeah, right? They're the same. Different ways of showing it, but 2 fourths is the exact same thing as 6, as six twelfths. Same thing as 1 half, right? Or 9 eighteenths. Just different ways to represent it, but they're equal. So, what I want you guys to, rep what I want to show you is if I, as long as I multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, it's still going to be equivalent. The value is not going to change. So, what crazy number would I want to multiply the top and the bottom by? Well, I don't like a fraction. That means I have a, a numerator and a denominator. I don't want that denominator there anymore, so I need to get rid of it. So if my denominator is 3, it would make sense to multiply by a numerator that is 3. Very good. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom equation by 3. Now remember, when doing that, you have to apply distributive property. All right, so then what I'm now going to obtain is the square root of 3 minus 3 over 3 
plus the square root of 3. Now, if you guys don't see where I got that answer, please let me know, because I'll be more than happy to break it down for you, because I've had to do it for every class so far. So does anybody have any issues with how I went from here by multiplying over to there? Every class, I've had to break it down. So if you want me to break it down, I'll be more than happy to. But if you feel OK, that's OK. Yes? Um, on the bottom, when you did 3, shouldn't you have done it on the, uh, the little the 1 and the 3 over 3? Three? No. Um, it doesn't matter, because what that is is square root of 3 over 3 times 1 times 3. You don't distribute a mu across multiplication, right? If I multiply 3, you just, it's all together, OK? If it, was mul if it was addition, yeah, you have to distribute to both of them. But multiplication, you don't have to, or we don't. But everybody else, does everybody understand when I multiply 3 times that, that just gives me square root of 3, right? Is everybody OK? OK, all right, good. So now, this is the way I'd prefer to multiply by my conjugate, Aaron. All right, you can do it from this, but I prefer to do it from here. So I'll multiply that by the conjugate. Crap. No, that's positive. Subtract. Where's 380? I wrote down the formula, right? Yeah, OK. I'm just trying to remember if that was the right one. All right, so now we multiply by the conjugate. Now, what's nice about multiplying by the conjugate, as I'm going to erase all this stuff now, because we've already used it. What's nice about multiplying by the conjugate is that gives us the difference of two squares, right? So you really only need to multiply the first two terms together. But the t numerator is going to be a little bit different. OK, yeah, it's, it's fine. So the numerator, I'm going to use the box method to multiply. So what I'll do is I'll put one, one binomial on the side, and I'll put the other binomial right here. So this is me multiplying the numerator. You guys don't have to use this method, but I know a lot of you kind of will get kind of confused with all these radicals and stuff. So using the box method to multiply two binomials might be helpful. It might not. So here, this becomes 3 square root of 3. This becomes negative 3. Dang it. Hmm. Has anybody seen any mistake I'm seeing here? Because I don't remember getting this at this point. I remember getting a 9. Square root of 3 minus 1. 1 plus, that's square root of 3 over 3, times 1. Multiply the 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. Hmm, I guess that's all right. I don't know. So anyways, when I go ahead and combine these now, I can combine these two, which would be 6 square root of 3 minus 12. Right? Yes? And then in my denominator, I need to get 6. OK. Oh, all right. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. In my denominator, when I apply difference to squares, I have 3 times 3, which is 9, and square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, which is negative 3. So that becomes 9 minus 3, OK, which is 6. So therefore, I have 6 square root of 3 minus 12 divided by 6. Now, to simplify my answer, I can now divide the 6 into both of those terms, and I obtain the square root of 3 minus 2. And that will be my final exact answer. OK? Did you get it? Good job.